What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, we are looking at the last part of this five part video series that prepares you for your C Sharp job interview. And we're going to look at the 10 last questions that are still remaining in order to have answered 50 questions. So those 50 questions should prepare you quite well for such a job interview. If you came across other questions that you might want to share with us, feel free to do that in the comments down below. So I'd say, let's get started. All right, so question number 41, what is multi-threading and what are its different states? Well, multi-threading. First of all, any code block in c -sharp runs in a process called a thread. And it is the execution path of the program. Usually an application runs in a single thread, but multi-threading helps to run the application in multiple threads. Using multi-threading, we can divide the execution of our process among different threads to execute it simultaneously. So in multi-threading, we can create multiple threads and assign particular tasks or put a code block to get executed. In this way, we can run more than one task at a time. This code block executes simultaneously and can save time. And in this, we can make programs more efficient and fast. So a thread has its life cycle, which includes various states. Okay, so it has the state aborted, abort request. That's before the aborted state can start. We have running, which basically means the thread has been started and not yet stopped. So it's currently running. Then there is thread stopped. To stop it, you can start a request. You can suspend the whole thread so that it's gone and so forth. So you can see a bunch of different states that a thread can have. And in C Sharp, you can use the namespace system.threading, which contains the thread class. So here, if you scroll down, you will find this class called a thread. So this creates and controls a thread and sets its priority and gets its status. There is, of course, a lot more to know about threads, but this is just a very, very super high level answer for this question. You could, of course, dig deeper into this and talk about this 10, 15 minutes during the interview. But I think in most cases, if they don't want to know significantly more, this should be enough. But otherwise, definitely read a lot more through the thread class and in general through the threading namespace to prepare yourself perfectly for this. Question number 42, how is exception handling done in C Sharp? Well, basically you can use those keywords to do exception handling, try, catch, throw, and finally, in the try block, you add the code that you want to execute that could run into errors and could cause an exception. Then you use the catch keyword to execute what should happen in case a specific exception occurs. And in our case, we can just throw an exception. In this case, it will just stop the program. There will not be any clean execution whatsoever. And then you have finally, in our case, we just throw the exception. So basically we will display the exception in the log. And then we have the finally block, which is executed no matter if the try block succeeded or wasn't successful. Question number 43, what are custom exceptions? Well, sometimes errors need to be caught as per our requirements. So as per our specific developers requirements and custom exceptions are used for those situations. So we can create our own exceptions. And this is a very basic one or basic approach to create such a custom exception. Basically, we throw a new exception saying that something may not happen, for example, or where we express what the problem with whatever was executed is. So in this case, I have this function called do purchase, and you can pass in a quantity that you want to purchase. But if for some reason the quantity is zero, we can throw the exception that the quantity cannot be zero, or let's say it's even less than zero or zero. Then we can extend this and say quantity cannot be zero or negative. All right, so now let's run this. 
and you will see that it's throwing an exception that is unhandled. It says quantity cannot be zero or negative and this is our custom exception that we created. There is a more complex way to create custom exceptions. You can basically inherit from the exception class to create your very own exceptions, but that again would be its own video to just talk about exceptions in detail. But basically you can see that there is this class exception and you can go ahead and create a custom class which will inherit from exception and then use it in your try and catch block as we have seen in 43. Question number 44. What is Link in C Sharp? And by Link I don't mean the guy from Zelda, the video game, I mean L, I and Q. So language integrated query is the full form of Link. It is a method of querying data using the .NET capabilities and C Sharp syntax similar to SQL query. And the advantage of Link is that we can query different sources of data. The data source could be either a collection of objects, XML files, JSON files, in-memory data, or lists, database objects, you name it. We can easily retrieve data from any object that implements the I enumerable interface. This is an example of link syntax. So we have a list here, which is just one type of enumerable that you could use for link. And we have mobiles in that list of strings. So iPhone, Samsung, Nokia, MI. So basically these are brands of mobile phones. And then this is the link syntax. So we have this var result and this is the query that we are using here. We say from S in mobiles where S contains Nokia, select S. So that is super powerful because now we can now use result to work with it. In our case, very simply writing onto the console. So if we want to use get data here and call this method, we need to make sure that it's static. So public static void get data. If we now run this, we will see that we get something very weird. We're gonna get system.link enumerable where list iterator one system string. So it's not very useful. But what we can do with result now is we can, for example, get the first entry. So we can call first that will return the first entry in that result. So basically the first thing that was filtered, in this case, it contains Nokia. So let's run this and we can get the result is Nokia. So this is a very simple list, but it could also be an XML file that we're working with, or it could be a database that we get from the web. And the cool thing is this code would work exactly the same. So we wouldn't have to change any of that. The only thing that we need to change is the data source, where it comes from and how we handle it. But that's really the power of link that it can work with different types of enumerables. Quick pause. In this video, you learn something about C Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C-Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C-Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C-Sharp. So you're gonna learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. If you want to learn more about Link, then you should definitely check out my complete C-Sharp Masterclass because there I cover how to use the Link in depth. Question number 45, what is serialization? When we want to send an object through a network, then we have to convert that object into a stream of bytes. Serialization is a process of converting an object into a stream of bytes to facilitate the object to be serializable it should implement the iSerialize interface. The process of deserialization is the reverse process of creating an object from a stream of bytes. And where I used serialization for the first time was when I created a game in Unity and there I had the situation where I wanted to store the state of the game. So I wanted to save the game basically. And in order to do that, I needed to make sure that I know where all of the objects were and I needed to serialize 
the objects so that I could then save it. And then I needed to deserialize the saved file to then basically load up the game. So that is where you would, for example, use serialization to save a game, but also to send data through a network. Question number 46, what are generics in C-sharp? Well, generics increase performance, increase type safety, reduce repeated code and make reusable code possible or more reusable code possible. So using generics, we can create collection classes. It is preferred to use collections.generic, the namespace, so collections.generic, instead of classes such as the ArrayList in systems.collections because it's just way more efficient. Generics encourage the usage of parameterized types. And yeah, let's have a look at this particular example that we have here. So to specify the parameter type, we use the less than and greater than sign here. So we have this class GFG, which has this generic type T. And then we have private data members T data type. This T data type here comes from our parameter type for the GFG. The same goes for this property here, public T value. And then we have this class here, vehicle with the main method. So here I'm creating a GFG out of strings, which I call company. And the value here is Tata Motors. So this is a Indian car manufacturer. And then I can also create an instance of float type. So here GFG float version. So now new GFG is of type float and version dot value is 0.6f. So I can use company value and version value. And you can see each time it's value, but the type of the value is different each time because we made it generic. So we used a generic here and that is really the power of generic. So you can really reuse quite a bit using generics. Question number 47, what is reflection? Well, reflection is when managed code can read its own metadata to find assemblies. Reflection provides objects of type type that describe assemblies, modules, and types. You can use reflection to dynamically create an instance of a type, bind the type to an existing object, or get the type from an existing object and invoke its method or access its fields and properties. If you are using attributes in your code reflection enables you to access them. So the following information can be retrieved using reflection, the assembly name, the class name, method name, object type, and it identifies properties and methods. Let's look at this super simple example of reflection. So here I have an integer called i and it has the value of 1337 and I can use reflection to get the type and then basically print the type onto the console. So this will give me information about the type saying system.int32 because this here is an int32. Question number 48, how to use nullable types in C-sharp? Well, C-sharp also offers the nullable type even though it's not used as often in, as in some other programming languages such as for example Swift there it's used extensively but it's called optional so it's not nullable but optional but basically the concept is the same so you have a variable that can be null and here for example we have this question mark after the integer telling that this can now be a nullable type which means that it can hold a null value. Now we have this function called calculate which needs a number and we can now assign this number that was passed to it to the number variable that was a nullable. And then we will only execute something in case that number has a value. So we definitely need to make sure that this is the case because otherwise we could, for example, try to use number at that point and it might be null. And if we want to access its value it could make our program crash. So that's why we have to be doubly careful when using nullables. All right, question number 49. What is the parent class of all classes which we create in C Sharp? Well, <laughs> it is the class called object. So system.object. 
is the class that we use for this. So basically, every single object that we create is inheriting from object. So the system dot object class, even though we don't do it specifically, but it's done automatically in the background. Question number 50, explain code compilation in C Sharp. So basically the C Sharp compiler compiles the code into managed code, also called bytecode, and then the JIT just-in-time compiler compiles the bytecode into native or machine language, which is directly executed by CPU. All right, so that's it for this series. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. 50 questions with 50 answers that could help you for your job interview in C Sharp. So yeah, I hope you liked it. If you did, then please leave a like and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we are uploading great other videos for C Sharp, Unity and Android regularly. Also, see you in the next video.